Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Jason's Bedtime Storytime. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This is going to be a nice bedtime story for you to fall asleep to. So this is, oh, I think I heard background sounds there. Ah, maybe it's giant from the beanstalk or oh, maybe it's a troll under a bitch somewhere. Sounds like a like a bee inside a inside a duck's tummy. Hmm. Anyway, I don't know what that was about. So this story is going to be, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet, but it's, it's about a lady. And she, she lived in a very nice house but she wasn't she was like the third child out of uh, three girls and she you know basically what happened is the three girls were born by her parents so mum and dad gave birth they took turns and then her mother uh, disappeared one day she she well, got struck by lightning or something like that um, I don't know uh, I've not really thought about that it's not really part of the story uh, I don't care really but anyway she her, her, her dad remarried And the woman that he married, for some reason, didn't get on with the youngest. Got on quite well with the first two, the eldest two. But I think part of that was because they were so much older. So that's maybe it. So, um, so the third girl, she was born probably about twelve years after the the last one. So there's a big age gap. So I suppose I should tell you the names of the, of the people. I'm trying to think of some names. Um, anyone would think I was making it up as I went along. So. The youngest lady, the youngest girl, is called Penelope, or Penny. Penny for short. Um, and the other two girls, uh, there is the two sisters. Uh, let's just call them the two sisters. Are that do we need them to have names? Is it important? Grace and Felicity. I mean, does it matter? Uh, it's not about them. It's about Penny. And Penny basically, uh, her dad, her dad unfortunately passed away as well. So she was left being looked after by her stepmom. The evil stepmother. And she wasn't really treated very well. Not like really badly, but just she was uh just treated like a housemaid. Um Oh, sounds like Cinderella. No yeah, I suppose. Kind of similar similar thing, but 
Um, the weird thing about it is because she had to keep looking after the house, but the house, the house was actually made of gingerbread, uh, which meant that everyone kept eating it. People used to travel from all around just to stop and eat it. In fact, it was the first. It was. It was the first. Um, kind of petrol stop in the world. You know where people are traveling and they stop and they go to the services and they get something to eat and go to the toilet. Well, that was the same thing. That was the first ever one, but it was all you know. Should we stop at the gingerbread house? And uh, some people just call it the ginger house. And some people just say, should we just stop at the stops? Because it was the only one. I mean, no one ever said, oh, should we stop at the first ever, uh, you know, place. Andre, will you shut up? We're just squeaking. Try and do a recording here, and he said, ah, ah. "Anyway, so she was, you know, she was constantly having to rebuild the walls of the cottage that they lived in. It used to be a mansion, but eventually, you know, it got eaten down to be in a cottage. Much easier to maintain. So." The problem was then because you get a lot of people wanting to cottage and it, it that's where cottaging comes from. You just have a lot of people just turn up and hang around waiting to meet uh, new interest in people to share experiences with. Uh, so I got, uh, that's where cottaging comes from. So it was the ginger, immediately it was uh, meet you at the gingerbread cottage. Uh, one person once said, "You know what? You know, it'd be really good." So you, and um, I forget her name now. Penny. Penny said, "What's what's that? What's that? What would be good?" And uh, someone that was cottage in there, some a man um, in a rain raincoat, he said, "What would be good is if you had, <clears throat> as well as the you know the." gingerbread walls the gingerbread roof and the gingerbread urinals you know because obviously it's a cottage had to need urinals to cottage and to go to the toilet and stuff um, what about if you had a gingerbread man standing outside and Penny said is that is it really because of the gingerbread or is it because there's no men here for you to meet and this is your you've been looking forward to cottaging all week and there's no one here and he said no oh, you got me I just I thought it'd be really lovely just no not ginger gingerbread man and she thought about it I mean she was baking all the time making the gingerbread for the walls keep changing the chimney um, the toilets, well, they weren't eaten. You know, the urinals weren't eaten, like the walls and stuff, but they definitely got, uh, they needed replacing quite often, that's all I'm saying. And the toilets, I don't even want to just, there's only so, you can only go so long pretending it's chocolate. Is it, is it gingerbread with chocolate on it? No, it's not. It's a toilet. Ugh. Gingerbread toilet. Yeah. So she thought, okay, I'll make I'll make a gingerbread man. And she did that. So that's where the gingerbread man come from. I don't know if she originated having because sometimes you can have smarties as eyes. But apparently, the the person who wanted the gingerbread man made said, 
Well, don't worry. You don't have to fill those holes in. That's fine. Just leave, leave the holes there. And then he carried off the gingerbread man into the urinals, into the toilets, which is weird. I don't know why. But it was a very friendly area. Everyone got on with each other, and it was very lovely. And the only problem really was the giants. Because Penny often used to climb up the beanstalk and uh, meet, <clears throat> meet her friend, Goldie Balls. And unfortunately, because her friend <clears throat> lived at the top of the beanstalk, which meant she had to climb through and in the middle of the beanstalk was where the giant lived so she had to kind of avoid the giant he was he was a bit of a handful to say the least you know he did, didn't just like eating people you know he's he's very uh, very wrong on many levels Problem in the middle level, the middle level of the clouds in the middle. So she used to visit her friend, um, Goldie Balls, and they used to play and stuff. And <clears throat> sometimes they'd meet up with Baby Bear as well, and that was fun also because they used to go along. And what they used to do, one of their favorite things was creep into their house when the daddy bear was upstairs cleaning his teeth you know getting ready for breakfast and his mummy mummy bear was upstairs making the bed for some reason and <clears throat> because bears were sleeping in a bed so what they do baby bear and goldie balls and uh, penny would put out the porridge and just start messing around with it and slopping it everywhere pouring some of it on the chairs some of it on the table and they do that sometimes and it really used to wind up Baby Bear's parents properly used to go who's been eating my porridge who's been eating my porridge and that, is, that was it. That's 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 the whole story for that one. Um, I'll update you if anything else happens, but that's kind of all that happens there. Sometimes they just said, "Oh, not again! Not again! This is getting silly." A bit like this story, really. This is going nowhere, <laughs> nowhere at all. Well, it had a beginning, didn't it? You know. I don't know where the middle is or where the end is, but you know, let's just see what happens. And they used to enjoy going and playing around with the bears. And while they were looking at them at the porridge and getting all upset about the porridge, they'd sneak upstairs and start messing with the beds. And for some reason, Daddy Bear and Mummy Bear had different beds. So, the thing is, I think because it was a very different time back then, um, they couldn't, uh, you know, th there were certain things they couldn't do that other people were allowed to do, and which meant they couldn't, they couldn't just like leave each other. They had to stay together really for the sake of the of the baby. Plus, where would where would they go? Because Mama Bear used to be married to the giant, but apparently it was a it was a painful relationship. And Penny asked one day, "So why why was it painful?" And she said, "He's a giant. <clears throat> he's a giant. Look at the size of me. He's a giant. Figure it out, darling." Penny blushed. She said, oh. 
and then she farted and her, and her left eye popped out and she said oh sorry about that and she popped her eye back in because Penny had a glass eye apparently a glass eye that used to pop out whenever she farted so like oh pop and it literally would be like that and it would just be like a mutual kind of hard to do for myself like because I don't have a glass eye and of course I've never farted so I wouldn't know how to do such things but she did she was a gassy messy she was she was just she was basically a walking cesspit so but you know she was nice hope I'm painting a good picture and <clears throat> she only had 15 warts on her face she was nice she was, for those times she was doing pretty good uh, having a huge wart was a sign of uh, vitality it was it was you know when people like maybe not my generation or the, like the older generations used to look at people's palms and say oh I see your lifeline I can tell by looking at your palm how long you're going to live and how much prosperity you're going to have <laughs> no you can't now go away so you know those kind of conversations but it was a similar thing but the more warts you had on your face the the luckier you were in life apparently, or the lucky you were going to be. It was almost a fortuitous sign. Fortuitous sign. So Penny, with her 700 warts and glass eye that popped out every time she fired. Um, the problem is that when she fired, her right leg fell off. So that's kind of because it wasn't so much the fart that made the left leg fall off, the right leg fall off rather. Um, a left leg, that would be silly, wouldn't it? A right leg. It was whenever her left eye popped out when she farted, it unbalanced her. So she kind of went off balance and her right leg just popped off. Because she, she didn't have a wooden leg. We couldn't afford a wooden leg, so it was made of gingerbread. So she was lucky if she, when she's walking through the forest, she was lucky if she could get home in one piece, literally, because all the rabbits and the squirrels. Oh, it's Peg Leg! Come on, it's it's Penny, and so it's like it was sort of. She used to like it to start with because a bit of attention. It's warty. It's ginger warty. Come on. And she'd be... But they'd be eating her leg as she's trying to get home. It's like, come on, come on, guys. It's my leg, that is. I've got to get home. Come on. Stop messing about. Please leave me alone. But they didn't. But they loved her. They loved her very much. And some of the, the male rabbits and squirrels used to you know she'd see them cottaging sometimes you'd see them at the cottage the gingerbread cottage and she's a very brave lady very brave little girl really she was a really little girl she was 52 but her oh, I didn't mention that yeah she was 52 and her sisters were in her 60s or middle 60s one was 68 and the other one was 65 I think but her step mum was only 18 so there was I think there's a lot of clash of a clash of almost I don't know, you know, sort of the, they didn't really get on, didn't really, really understand each other's cultures. 
It's a very different, a very different kind of, you know. See, she, you know, uh, what's her name? Uh, Penny. Penny was very much into probably like classical music, Frank Sinatra, and her stepmom was into raving and that kind of stuff. Eh? It's a gangster, gangster music. Yeah, really into that. I mean, she know she liked nothing better than to go out on a on a Saturday night. Do a little shoot, shoot by, you know, drive by shooting, and it's just very, very full of energy, very full of energy for a grand, well, stepmother. And she did quite well, really, considering she was eighteen, and she was looking after pensioners, really. And I mean, she was only married to the father of the children for about ten years. But those were the times then, you know, it's different back then. Um, unlike now, back then, people were a bit dim, a bit, a bit, a bit backward, really, in the sense of, okay, you know, their argument is quite often, well, that's how it was back then. Yeah, but it wasn't nice then either, though, was it? That's how we were. That's how things were. But why didn't you question it? Didn't question it. We didn't know any different. So you had no ability to think for yourselves. Think for ourselves? <laughs> What's that then? What's thinking? What does that mean? So Penny, you know, is it a little bit in the dark ages a little bit to be honest she didn't really understand today's world as much as her stepmother now her stepmother for some reason decided that she wanted to learn to break dance so she asked Penny And Penny said, you know, oh, Penny, Penny thought, well, this is an opportunity to get on the good, in the good side of my stepmom and maybe build a friendship possibly, you know, build some kind of a, I don't know, relationship uh, so that things could be a little bit easier to like living conditions and stuff so she said okay okay step mama we can we can have a I'll teach you know I'll teach you to break dance and stepmother was she smiled for the first time and it literally was the first time she'd ever seen her stepmother's tooth I thought, oh, that was nice. And she had to, her, her stepmom said, what? She said, said, that was nice. She said, what? And she really remembered that her stepmom doesn't have any ears. She could hear, but she didn't have any ears. She said a whole a little, it was more like a little nipple on either side of her head that would open up every now and then because she also breathed through them as well didn't have a, a mouth and uh, she had gills she, she actually lived in a, in a pond and I remember she she said well that's lovely but how am I going to teach you <laughs> how, how am I going to how am I going to teach you to break dance if while you're in a pond? And her stepmom said, blah, 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 blah. 
Our stepmom said, because um, she was telepathic, you see, so she could telepathically talk um, to Cinderella. No, and Penny, and Penny didn't. Penny didn't realise it was telepathy. She just thought she was perhaps because she could see that her lips weren't moving. So she thought that maybe uh, in a previous life, her stepmom used to be a ventriloquist. Uh, that's she just assumed that, which is natural. You may think, well, how does she have lips if she has no mouth? And that's a question that has been, it's really been wrecking the brains of historians uh, for many, 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 many minutes. But no one's come up with a solution. No one's come up with, I don't really know why. But as as Penny's oldest sister once said uh, during a, a discussion, um, it was like an, I'm more of an argument really between Penny and her older sister, Winella, the giant kisser. That, that was her nickname, and they she said. Um, if I can remember, why, why, what, you know, why, and all that, and, and her sister said, it's not about why, the most important question is, when are you going to finish building the fireplace, because it's cold, I get back into the kitchen and make, make more gingerbread, so we can have the fireplace rebuilt, and, Cinderella, I mean, um, Penny said, yeah, but if you, why do you keep eating it for then? Why do you keep eating it for then? And Grindelella, Bella, Ella, Ella, said, I didn't eat it. It was burnt. So, the weird thing is, sometimes they get into arguments. Once they got into an argument, because Penny overcooked the gingerbread accidentally and put it in the fireplace you know made the fireplace out of the uh, accidentally overburnt gingerbread and her sister started getting angry at her saying what you and penny tried to explain it doesn't matter there's going to be a fire there in a minute it's going to burn anyway but that's not the point. It doesn't look nice now. And how am I supposed to eat it? But you said you didn't eat it. Oh, damn. And then for some reason she grew wings and flew away. So she hasn't seen her oldest sister for quite some time. Apparently she met up with a, a bat somewhere and they're having a little... Had a few babies and um, got into publishing. <laughs> I don't know. That's a family business. It was either that or a kebab shop. They weren't sure which way to go. So, her, sorry, her stepmom wanted to learn, her stepmom wanted to learn to break dance. So she did taught to break dance. Um, this is before she had the wooden leg. So basically what happened is while she was teaching her, her mum or stepmum to break dance, her stepmum didn't tell her that she had some of her relatives there visiting. Which you could say, well, it doesn't matter. She was just teaching her to break dance. But her step, uh, the stepmom's relatives were piranha fish. So she ended up, they ended up eating her leg. One of her eyes. So, you know, it changed her life a little bit. You could say. 
so that that kind of it didn't work out quite so well because they were getting on really quite nicely uh, for the first for the first few lessons of break dancing her stepmom stopped chucking rice at her which was nice not to have rice chucked in your face and after a while she sort of because you know she said I, 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 I'm really pleased that you stopped chucking rice at me I was wondering now that we've done four lessons perhaps you could stop chucking monkey poo at me as well and her stepmom started laughing she said it's not monkey poo where am I going to get monkey poo from? It's giraffe poo. Oh, okay. Sure. That would explain it. It definitely seemed to have quite a long neck to it. Which makes no sense. But then none of it really does. And then out of nowhere, her stepmum turned into a big white swan. Like, Wow. Didn't see that happening. Didn't see that coming. And she said, well, you did see it happen, didn't you? And she said, yeah, it's, a, it's an expression. I just didn't expect it to happen. And her stepmom said, nobody expects things like this. And uh, Penny... Penny decided to... Uh, cook her stepmom in the oven so she did and had a really nice dinner her and her one sister that was left because of course the other one flew off and they decided to invite the gingerbread man into the house for the first time because normally lived lived in a cage outside and uh, she didn't realise that the gingerbread man had such a wonderful smile. Didn't didn't realise that. And they it also made her laugh. And every time she laughed it made her fart. And every time she farted, her left eye popped out. And then her right leg fell off. Which made him laugh. Which then made her laugh even more. Which made her fart even more. Eventually her head exploded. Yeah, it was very messy and that, that was it really. And then a gingerbread man married her sister. And they uh, had babies. And everything was going well. Until one day they fell into a big cup of tea and that was the end of the family which is the end of this story so I hope you've uh, it's helped you to drift off to sleep and you know it's the, I might do another story another time so Take care of yourselves, have a nice sleep. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Now go to sleep. <laughs>